Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Celestia Radio Podcast. I am here, your host as normal, Matthias, with Dalit and Nat. How are you gents doing? Good, everyone. Hi, everyone. I'm doing pretty good. Thanks. So, guys, I, I had a thing that I that I wanted to bring to, to the attention of us present, to the three of us and our dear listeners. I obviously can't speak for all of our listeners and, and the age demographic out there. But I can speak for us three. And we're all of a fairly, fairly similar age demogra- demographic. Yeah, you know? ages 25 to 33, 35. So we all kind of grew up in that time period. You know, we, we all were there basically at, you know, the technology boom, more or mm-hmm. less, where technology advanced incredibly fast over the span of like three years. Yeah. Computers weren't, and... weren't briefcases uh, at the time <laughs> of our living. So, you know. Yeah, but we all grew up with video games and playing video games and watching video games advance. And I'm sure at some point or another, the thought crossed each of our minds. Would it not be so cool to play video games for a living? Yeah. And I'm I'm not wrong. I mean, you both obviously had that thought when you were younger, right? Absolutely. Uh, Yes and no. I absolutely had the thought it was not when I was younger. Um, I was, an, I was okay. an outdoor kid. I didn't even consider that I might have had the capability to get through on this until I was in my late 20s. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Well, I, I want to change my answer. Uh, I actually agree with Dolan. I am both a yes and a no person as well. Oh, uh, very similar with Dolan. Like I was an outdoor person, you know, sporty guy. Did soccer, cricket, all that mm-hmm. stuff, right? But because we live, because I live in Australia, <laughs> and our internet wasn't the greatest, as in like the uploads were literally in kilobytes. Um, so even if I had that choice early in life, it, yeah, just the internet was not there for us. Well, for me, at least. Dang, I'm learning things about my friends all, every day, guys. Uh, yeah, we, day. we were not those kinds of kids. Well, like, I, 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 I feel like I knew that about you, Dolly, because I feel like we've had that conversation before. Yeah. But I did not know it, I did not know it about Nat. So that's, you know, I learned something. And uh, it, it, it completely derailed and threw off my entire intro into this. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> because ruined my perfect intro. It's fine. Keep it's that fine. in. Keep that in. Uh, yeah, keep that in. I know somebody out there listening feels me. They 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 feel it in their core. You thought when you were a kid, man, wouldn't playing video games for a living be the coolest thing? Maybe maybe not. Maybe that was just me. Maybe I'm just you know the antisocial neat kid that just never wanted to leave his room. Yeah, you're the odd one out. Yeah, I have a problem. sorry. I'm, 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 I have a problem. Um, <laughs> that being said, <laughs> but the thing is, is now. Fast forward to, you know, the year 2024. I definitely didn't have to look down at my calendar. Uh, that's a thing. People play games for a living in many different as- like uh, yeah aspects. Like, you have, you know, content creators that play them, you know, making videos, streaming, uh, reviewing games. You have, in, in a similar field, you have game journalists that do, which... You know, they've been around a little bit longer than the content creator thing, so to speak. Um, yeah. Reviewing and playing games. You have mm-hmm. what was that in that bridge kind of leading into this big content creation for video games and streaming and stuff of quote unquote professional gamers that did things like the esports and the tournaments and things like that to, to you know, make a living playing video games. And that's kind of awesome and cool in a number of ways uh oh very much so like to me and i guess i have to say to me because obviously i'm the odd one out here sob uh, <laughs> it it's just incredible to think about you know I, I i remember not at all because i recently had to look at a bunch of old photos of myself uh you know young young matt like knee high to a grasshopper matt playing video games, you know, every day after school or over the weekends or whatever. 
and just being like, yeah, I love video games. Playing video games is great. Never even considered, mm. you know, the possibility of it actually being something you could viably do for a living, even though I thought it would be really cool. But that was just one of those things, you know, how a lot of kids out there are like, oh, being a superhero would be really cool. Like, I was like, yeah, it's something that'd be really cool. Not something you actually think is possible or going to happen. Sure. Yeah. And now it is. Now there's hundreds and thousands of people out there like that play video games for a living and it's mind-blowing to me to just see that as somebody who is on twitch uh daily um because i have you know daily more like hourly let's be real here i mean yeah to be fair i i, I always have twitch open <laughs> we're, we're recording twitch is open i have streams running you, honestly same yeah yeah it's I have a problem, if I'm being honest, because I have, you know, six or seven streams running at a time. But, you know, I have Twitch open. I have YouTube open. I've watched Let's Plays on YouTube. I've watched, you know, streams on YouTube. I've watched people play games on Twitch all the time. And it's really cool, as somebody who grew up in that age and had those thoughts, seeing people actually able to do it. And Right, yeah. But just so I'm not repeating myself, Constantly, because I'm I'm going to do that if I keep talking. It's <laughs> you guys tell me what what do you think? Like, is it from from y'all's perspective seeing this all as a, as a thing? Would you like to go first, Dollar? Yeah, I can tackle this first anyway. Um, growing up, I mean, obviously, as I've said, I was an outdoor kid. I was very sporty. My uncle was a um, gym a gym teacher and a coach, so oh, okay. I was. Doing all of that. And we'd, we'd go home, and he was also the person who like, I'd play games with. We, he introduced me to Metal Gear. He introduced me, really, to the PlayStation suite. Uh, whenever you hear me talk about demo discs, it was on his PlayStation. Yeah. Uh, so there was all of that. But just with the atmosphere uh, where I was, I didn't have an internet presence at all at that point. Uh, that never really stood out to me. It wouldn't be... Until, not just Rooster Teeth, but specifically Achievement Hunter, that I saw that as Ooh. at all a viable path forward for anyone. Which, realistically, is not really true, because people were doing it before that, right? Like, there were people who informed Achievement Hunter as to what they might or might not have had to do. Machinima existed, various uh, independent streamers, or not streamers at the time, YouTube creators existed at that point. Right. But it, yeah, it was yeah. Rooster Teeth that first made me feel like they could do it because they were the first people that I wanted to watch. There were multiple personalities. There were multiple game types. It, there were shows within this show, as it oh. were. Uh, mm -hmm. And that, that, that really made it feel legit. Um, right. I, I guess it's the reason why I can't get into streaming myself. I've never really found person sits in front of people and plays video games compelling. And I know a lot of people do. Um, and that wouldn't change until the just chatting streams came around and I figured out, okay, well, now I've learned about parasocial relationships and I understand how this works, <laughs> right? Um, and I don't mean that derogatorily, right? Like, so genuinely, having someone you can go to at a certain set time and just shoot the shit with is pretty great. That's literally D&D &D in a nutshell, more or less. Uh, this is true, <laughs> but for an online culture of people who oh, yeah. um, don't always have access to these relationships, I right. can see why it did take just chatting and the rise of, like, streaming personalities to really get that. And that is to say nothing of VTubers, which would take that and really double down on it. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's... As somebody who's... Most of my recent streams have been just, just chatting streams, just hanging out, watching videos about games and things like that. It's... There's a lot of joy and just relaxing comfort in sitting there and just... As you said, you know, just shooting the breeze about, you know, whatever and whenever with with a chat. Yeah. So. Finding a place where you can just vibe with someone about, you know, 
perhaps content you do like, maybe things you don't like. It, it means a lot to people who otherwise aren't getting that. Um, to be more personal to myself, um, I mentioned that like I really didn't consider it until I was in my late 20s, where I did very briefly, and I have always only considered this under the most pristine circumstances. You've heard me uh, get berated by these two about why won't you try? Why won't you stream? <laughs> it's because I there's a certain caliber I want to be at uh, baseline. I want it to be a smooth stream. I would want it to be of quality. And the hardest thing for me is getting around the idea that as an individual, I am interesting to I am interesting to watch while I am not directly interacting with chat. Ooh. That one I understand. Yeah, and that's the big oh. thing. Yeah, I cool like I, I don't, and it's because I don't find a lot of people who do this professionally to be interesting when they're not directly interacting with chat. I don't necessarily find it very interesting to watch someone else play a video game. That's fair. I mean, that... Right. So I put a lot of that onto myself. I, I mean, that's fair. Like, there's a there's a big part in it, right, where... If you enjoy Twitch streams, YouTube streams, whatever, uh, you have to be somebody that enjoys, you know, sitting down and watching others play games. Because because even Just if you so. are in chat, you, you know, depending on the size of the streamer, uh, there's no guarantee mm -hmm. you'll be directly involved or interacted with. Uh, I mean, because you see, you know, plenty of streamers that, you know, get up there into the, you know, 20, 30,000 viewer range sometimes. You're one person mm -hmm. in thousands, so it's, you know, very unlikely you'll get picked out and interact with it directly. But, you know, sometimes you do. And that, all, that always, feel, that always feels true. really, you know, oddly satisfying when, when your message gets picked out in those big, big, big walls of chatters going by. The sea of Yeah, people. it's pretty cool in that. Mm -hmm. But, yeah... You at, you at some base level have to enjoy uh, watching people play video games. And it's kind of cool if you think about there was a natural evolution of that, right? Because it before streamers became much of a thing and streaming was much of a thing, you had Let's Players on YouTube who, who yeah. basically yeah, did this do what streamers do, but without the chat, without the audience interaction. They would play a game and commentate over it as they're playing it. And you had a wide variety right. of people that did Let's Players, the ones that are more normal to what streaming is today. And then you had some really different ones out there, like like the ones that would play RPGs and then kind of do role-play Let's Plays, which were the ones I personally enjoyed watching a lot. Uh, if I shout out a YouTube channel, I want to shout out Go for Gaming. Uh, he mm -hmm. he did a lot of like the uh, Bethesda's uh, uh, like Elder Scrolls and Fallout games, and he always did like role play, let's play. Still does actually, um, and they're always so so good to watch, so entertaining. He's a very entertaining individual, and then the characters he you know makes of his character, and watching the playthroughs are always very fun. And but it's. Seeing that natural evolution kind of thing is just really cool to see that it happened in that way. And it what but it is interesting to consider it wasn't a it just suddenly everybody was like, Oh yeah, I like to watch people play games. There was a kind of a build up to it. Yeah. Right. I think in some ways you could you could even equate it to to how we, we started this episode. There are plenty of people that love to watch sports but don't play them. True, very true. A lot of non-athletes out there who could tell you way, way more about sports than you would ever guess. Um, right. But yeah, I mean, like that, that's kind of where my headspace is at. Like, there's a whole lot to talk about this. I'm sure I'll get into more detail as we break it down to more, uh, to smaller chunks. But Nat, uh, let's, let's go to you before we just completely forget to come back. Um, uh, so... Uh, essentially just copy what Dollar says and paste it into mine, but take out the, um, the uncle and all that, <laughs> more or less. Like, I'm not even joking. When I was, when I was literally just hearing Dollar discuss his younger life, I'm like, holy shit, he's literally fucking me. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
oh my god, he's me for real, <laughs> like we, for real. We, we pretty, <laughs> he's me for real, yeah. for real. Yeah, like we we've done pretty much similar things again, just minus the uh, uncle being. Oh, I'm sorry, Jill said you had a your own card channel. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say though. Uh, I would replace your uncle with my older sister because she had a PlayStation 2, which I still have. It's the satin silver one. Mm, nice. And I don't... It's a Sega console. I just don't remember what it was called. But yeah, I played like Sonic back uh, in the day, right? Hard money on the Genesis. So I think it was Genesis, but again, I, I, I can't remember. Long live the Genesis. My head. It's... Oh, actually, uh, yeah. Maybe it's no. You're too young for it to have been. I mm. was literally like single digit in age. Hmm. I I'm gonna so, assume Genesis um, though. That it's funny that that sounds yeah. a lot like me and my getting into gaming was my older sister I was the one who kind of played a yeah. part in it, and then I had a Sega. And I want to say Genesis. So, but anyways, you're saying that. Yeah, yeah. So pretty much sporty guy like you know obviously i would play video games after school and all that um and especially during the weekends and all that uh you know kingdom hearts all that all the square enix fucking jrpgs and all that um and then i think it was either rooster teeth or machinima that um I wouldn't say got me into the idea of making content creation as a living. It was more like, you know, just your standard uh, free entertainment on the internet, right. despite, you know, Australian internet, so fucking dog shit, right? Like, it it, it was terrible before we got NBN. Um, or like the, um, for you Americans, it's like, uh, fiber cables. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, fiber, yeah. What's it called? Fiber, you know, fiber. You got it. Whatever it's called, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, it's not like there wasn't Australian content creators because there definitely was. Uh, Max Mofo and um, not necessarily uh, uh, Chad or I did any or I do. Well, what the fuck's his name again? Um, anything for views. There we go. Um, they content created but their stories were like it would take like eight plus hours just to upload a video right. like like 480p some shit like that right like it was, it was like ah yes the good old days of standard definition <laughs> well i mean <laughs> obviously content so, creation goes so, outside of video games of course as well but it does we are i mean we are new, new grounds existed that was that, that was crazy for content generation yeah yeah, like flash games, mm-hmm. flash animation. Yeah, just and then music. you had people, you had the old, you had the old, like the golden age of YouTube. You know, Smosh, Niga Higa, uh, and then you had like the old anime channels uh, and whatnot. Like, there's content creation outside of gaming, but for the purpose of what we're talking about, we are talking hmm. about gaming. But yeah, of course, I just felt like yeah. that should be said. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, uh, it wasn't until. I got onto Twitch. That's when I considered streaming to be or content creation to be, uh, you know, being able to live off it, sort of thing. Um, well, Twitch did kind of revolutionize that, like it, like it did. I make a bigger plat. Revolutionize may not be the right word for it, but it did, you know, create a place, a bigger platform that you know allowed maybe for it. i i think what revolutionized it was machinima but i, I would agree with that actually machinima i think uh youtube really made it so people f- could feel comfortable with the idea of content creation being an actual job yeah. what i think uh almost at steam what i think twitch did was make it much easier for the personalities to continue to entertain uh, without having to put in gross amounts of work. Because, I mean, obviously streaming yourself doing things is just much easier than the amount of work that was being put into the videos that went up on Machinima, IGN, oh, yeah. uh, Rooster Teeth, all of these sites, right? 
So it was kind of, if anything, like a way for people who are already successful to double dip and a new avenue for people Mm. who didn't have the tools to find their way in. No, you, you worded that way yeah, better. Um, I, I, way betterly? Man, <laughs> English went out the window for me there. It's just one of those days, my guy. <laughs> ESL. Uh, but yeah, so I I personally, my like my own personal experiences, um, I did not consider content creation to be, I don't want to say, I don't want to use the word profitable, but like being able to like live off content creation will, wouldn't be until like Twitch. And Twitch already existed. It was called Justin TV, True. but like I didn't, I didn't join when it was Justin TV. So yeah. I don't think any of us did, honestly. So yeah, that's me. Uh, that being said, though, I did do my own like uh, I, I don't want to say montages, but you know, I played Call of Duty Black Ops on the Xbox 360. So you know, whenever I got, I landed a trick shot or anything like that, you know, I would. I would clip and edit it my own thing, but you know, the, those are those are lost in time. Mm. Those are never coming back. So I, I would definitely say um uh, not IGN, um Machinima and doing videos, especially like montage related videos, definitely uh encouraged a generation. I don't want to say generation. No, I, I think you're right to say it. The right way, but yeah, that's a good word. Oh, okay. Yeah, generation of content creating, but not having like the money being the forethought, like just simply creating just random bullshit yeah. sort of thing. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I think I think listening to both of you, I realized the the big the big difference between me me and the two of you growing up, and why I had this thought so much younger. I didn't have friends. You guys clearly did. Y'all had friends to play play Ooh, play sports with. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm pretty sure you had friends. Don't be like that. that hurt to hear. Don't do that. <laughs> yes. Believe it or not, I actually did have friends. I know. I know it sounds crazy. Uh, yeah. Sorry, that one that one was it, it was just <laughs> I, t- I couldn't I couldn't resist it. It was right there. It was, yeah. uh. <laughs> It's, just it's true, but it's 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 funny all the same. Humor, that's true. Um, no, yeah. So, but it's where was it, where was I going to go with this? It was so that's the baseline. That's where it started. You know, as y'all say, Machinima, Rooster Teeth, in that age. You know, Twitch made it more accessible uh, mm-hmm. for more people to do it, and kind of gave a different way. For people to do it with, you know, being live instead of pre-recorded. Yeah. And now you have people that do this for a living in, you know, all over the world. Uh, but it, it's feasible, which is, is, I guess, the encouraging thing for a younger generation now to look at it is it's feasible for many different audience sizes. You don't have to be, you know, the, like, Moist Critical, the uh, Asmund Golds, the, you know, you don't have to be (laughs) these huge, massive creators with thousands and thousands of viewers into the tens of thousands of viewers to be successful at it, obviously. Well, it depends on what you classify as successful. That's true. Depending on what you yeah, classify as successful, say, that's but to make a living, uh, and if that's what you want to do, you can do it at smaller audience sizes. You don't have it. It is much harder. You you know, there's a lot more that goes into it at that stage. It's not just you know doing what you do. I'm not saying that there isn't a lot of work for the, the bigger creators too. I would never downplay all the work and effort they've put into it too. But it's yeah, it, I can see like. Because think like think about it now. We all kind of, to different degrees or another, kind of watched it become a thing and watched it become what it is and yeah. saw its journey. And now for, you know, yeah. younger people coming into this, this is just a thing. 
that it exists, that people do. So it can be a very yeah, everything's like already late. Yeah, it can be a very daunting like, thing to look at too. Yeah. Because you can you because it's like, well, how 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 do you know if you're like, like, you know able to sustain it or how do you know if you're able to do it? How do you know if you know you can do it for a living kind of thing? It is probably Yeah. It's a lot more daunting to look at now compared to back then where it was just like if if you were getting views, you you were clearly doing it. I can definitely appreciate that idea. Um, so at the end of high school, I had been I had been badgered to do a lot of acting during my junior and senior year, and I never did. So at the end of that, I ended up taking voiceover for a number of years. And of course, when I met you all, I had I had long since finished that, and um. It's it's just kind of been another point of more people saying, you should do this, we think you could. But looking at, let's call it the industry, looking at Twitch, seeing all the people that are very successful, seeing all, all the people who are very much not, it is daunting, right? Because uh, there are pl- right. plenty of people that I look at who are successful and I go, I would never watch, I have no idea what the je ne sais quoi is that brings people to this person. And then I would look at someone with just a handful of viewers and go, and I think they should be killing it. And like the the big disparity is uh, money. Well, the big disparity is quality. And quality comes with time as you've been able to get comfortable in the space and as you've been able to make a little bit of money to funnel back into your product. Um, so, like, I think that's where, like, a lot of my iffiness on the situation comes from. It didn't cost me a damn thing to get into voiceover. Actually, that's not true. It cost me a microphone, and that was quite expensive. But this feels like it would cost quite a bit in order to get to the quality level to feel comparable to a low-level success. Like, someone who you're still working to make to make the rent, but you come back and you have an audience. And I, I genuinely think it is a question of quality. I agree. The quality definitely plays a part to it. I, I would say it also comes back to, I don't want to say luck, but. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but that is, it, yeah, that is. I don't know if that's that, the word you were really looking for, is, but yeah, that really is the word, right? Because even it, just like with YouTube back in the day, it's you get one video go viral, you get one clip now to go viral, and people are going to come through. People are going to watch you, and they're you know going to see you know if they like you, if they entertain you. Getting eyes on you is kind of the real trick because I've seen. You know, tons of streamers mm-hmm. that have that have the quality, but they still have the lower viewer oh, yeah. uh, audience. Views. Sure, and it's like, well, sure, sure. Why? Because they just haven't had mm-hmm. the luck and success of getting that clip or getting their name out there. Because, I mean, even as much advertising as you can do or put your name out there as much as you do, there's, I mean, the 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 sphere went from non-existence to existence. To, there's tons of people out there trying to shoot their shot. There's tons of people out there that have made it, and there's you know, just there's there's so many people out there now. So so many people probably tune that out. There is something I would like you to look up at some point because I don't actually, despite my immediate gut reaction being like, yeah, the word you were looking for is luck, and luck does play into this. There is a video I will I will I'd want you to look at. Uh, Ludwig, who we all know at this point, mm-hmm. had a pretty good video that pointed out that it's really not about luck. It's about content, quality, and consistency, I believe. Um, or, no, 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 that's a different video. He had a video that he like, he could guarantee virality on. Hmm. Uh, so it, it, it's really about knowing how to abuse the tools. Oh, yeah, abusing uh, the algorithm, whether it's tweets or true. videos or just, yeah. And it's going to be a bit harder for us as a purely 
vocal podcast to do it, but like in, in a visual medium, like let's take YouTube shorts, for example, right? Right. Yeah. That, that should be a pretty easy thing to manipulate. If yeah. you put out enough content and cover enough key things and you put something flashy on screen, it doesn't have to be the most flashy thing in the world, just something, there is a good chance you can get yourself picked up. Uh, and it's why I don't necessarily subscribe to the idea of discoverability being the biggest bar to entry. It is the first bar to entry for certain. But consistency is king, especially in this. It's why all of your favorite streamers have a schedule. And they stick to it religiously and they apologize profusely when they have to go off it. Your consistency, 100%. Yeah, they will always freely add days to it, but if they miss a day, they will immediately tweet, they will be they'll be all over and letting you know, and they'll apologize for it. Because it is one thing to get these views and have a great month. And it's another thing to have these views for a month and then just tank afterwards. Because you can go right back to being dead. It's true. Yeah. So, um, like, for me, content creation is a very, very weird beast. Because it's not just about making the thing. If you want, like, if you want this sustained audience. Because there are people that clearly don't mind. H Bomber Guy puts out a video, like, once every two years. Gets two million views for, like, a four-hour video that is mwah, so well-researched and so well-edited. But then you have your daily uploaders, right? And their whole thing is, maybe they don't put out 10 billion videos a day like YouTube used to be. Thank oh, God gosh. those days are dead. Yes. But they are putting something out every day. Because right. they know that if you keep coming back to them every day, and you build a schedule, a habit, they've got you. Whether you like what they're saying or not, you'll always just check in on them, just to see what they're doing, right? Like for me, Philip DeFranco, he's got me. He's had me for years. I always go to him to check out the news, and then I'll go double check to make sure that all of his stuff is good. But I do watch the Philip DeFranco show. Right. So. Yeah, I mean, consistency is definitely a, a huge thing. And that that's a that's one of the big insider tips you'll get from a lot of content creators is consistency. So that's uh, worth I, pointing out. I, I don't know. It's 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 really weird because like it's 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 as you said right though like h h bomb man right he he rarely uploads regularly but once he does he you know it's good right but he's already made his audience if you try to do that as a a lower viewer i mean that just goes back to consistency but like yeah, no, I mean, even, my, even I, like, the point you were about to make is correct. Yes. Um, I would, like, I specifically wouldn't use H Bomber Guy as as a uh, point of contact. Example. Like, that is clearly a poor example. Right. That's why, that's why I used it kind of as an outlier. Right. Like, you can do this, but it's unlikely to work out. Yeah. You definitely want to be on the daily grind. Yeah. But, like, even, but even then, like... I still think there is some form of luck because even if you do the daily grind and you just don't get seen, uh, whether or not you are or are not uh, abusing the algorithm of whatever social media platform you're using, right? Because it doesn't have to be just Twitter or YouTube, right? It, like, yeah, it's... I mean... No, there's no denying that luck is a part of it. Because, for sure, for yeah. sure. As with all things. Mm. It, uh, yeah, as with all things, really. I mean, just finding a good job in general is a luck thing. I mean, you can apply to something mm -hmm. that mm. you studied for through, you know, X amount of years of university and go to this job and then the workplace environment be terrible. Even if it's what you want to do, everything about it and around it is terrible. Right. Uh, so, I mean, Think about it. How many people with degrees do you know are currently a DoorDash driver? Because oh God, I have no like idea. that's the current climate we're in. Yeah. So yeah, luck is huge. No two, no two ways about it. But it's not the only thing. thing. It's not but yeah, the it's not obstacle. the only thing. And I think a lot of people get hung up that um, 
that it it is, uh, especially young people. Mm. And and then like like I was gonna say, let me repeat is for any young listeners we have, or you know people that are curious to get into it. This is common advice you will hear from many many Every, many yeah, 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 content yeah, yeah. creators out there. Don't just shoot the shot without a backup plan. Uh, so many content creators, so many of them, including some of your biggest ones, got into this, got into content creation while they were in university studying for a degree or while they were working a full-time job or mm -hmm. something like that. You need that backup plan. Not a lot of people are ever going to be in a situation where they can just sit down and go for it and not have to worry about work or not worry have to worry about the backup plan or things like that. Right. So definitely it's a slow burn uh, to to start that build. It's never going to instantly jump off. Uh I mean I've heard, you know, a streamer that I watch that streams regularly to 4 or 5,000 people every time they stream. She said, you know, for the first year, year and a half, she was streaming, you know, every day. And it was to like one or two people mm -hmm. constantly. So yeah. it takes, it's a slow burn. It takes time. And then, you know, she was in a situation where she was able to do that and not so much have to worry about the work thing. But for a lot of other streamers and content creators and et cetera and so forth, they'll tell you. And even the biggest ones will tell you. Have a backup plan. Don't throw your life away jumping into this and chasing this, right? You you need to be prepared for the eventuality that you don't make it, but that's not to say give up on it. That's just to say you got to do something to, to live while you're doing it. And that's what many of them do and what many of them still do while they do content creation, to be fair. So... How do we feel about one of the most popular answers to what do you want to be as you grow up? Uh, having been in recent years a YouTube content creator, ooh, mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest with you. I heard that and I immediately hated it. I don't like that. That is a dream, um, and I, I suppose it's a bit unfair because it's like someone saying they want to be a movie star. Same concept, right? Um, it's so unlikely though. But here's here's the opposite side of it, right? I I don't want to say I like it. But hopefully, um, I don't want to. I, I don't want to just group everyone together and just call them fucking boomers. But boomers and all the normies and all that take it in, uh, into entertainment on the internet as a job, like as serious as like a banker sort of thing, right? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I barely take it that seriously, and I'm on the internet well, that often. Maybe serious is not the right word. No, serious is the right word, because, like, you, you also I, I should clarify. Oh, God, I just realized how bad that sounds. <laughs> um, it's, it's not for the talent that I think this. It's for the regulations surrounding the sites that pay out that talent and the protections of the people therein. The reason why... Uh, it bothers me that this is the career path for so many young people right now. Is because these, these, the communities that you're trying to build up are not. Hmm. Let's rephrase that. The foundations of YouTube and Twitch specifically are not there yet. It's true. It's uh, something several. Uh, I won't say several. But it has been propping up more frequently on the YouTube side of things is is content creators that are retiring. It's like, what does that mean for them retiring from content creation? Like, so that, that right. that's a question well, that people ask. To uh, be fair, to ask now. It means for them that they can do whatever they want because they've made enough money and they can be out. Yes, yes. exactly. Um, but... My issues come from th there are strengths of having a quote unquote normal job, right? Absolutely. Definitely. You have steady pay. You have benefits and you have protections in place should anything arise. It's why for content creation, a lot of the things you've seen me point at are corporate, right? Mm -hmm. Machinima, um, Achievement Hunter, 
hell, if I'm doing voiceover, I'm thinking of the corporate industries. I'm very rarely thinking of the indies. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's because there is safety there away from having to rely on YouTube and Twitch to take care of you. There's this other company with all of these contracts and these protections for the end user. Right. And everyone doesn't get to be there and almost no one starts there. Yeah. Yeah. Let me let me answer your question of what do I think of so many yeah. young people answering that now. I just said young people like I'm way older than I am. Um Ow. I don't know, man. I'm old. Uh, say it for me. <laughs> <laughs> you made a good comparison when you compared it to people saying they want to be a movie star. Because, yeah. I mean, a lot of people will get into acting when they get into, like, middle school, high school, and things like that. And a lot of people yeah, want to m- say they want to be a movie star. But how many mm-hmm. people that do acting actually end up on Broadway? How many people that perform on a stage end up in the movie theater or in the movie theater on movie screens in the movie theater because they end up as an actor it's it's a very difficult thing to get into and in a way it's very similar because they're both forms of entertainment being a content creator is at the end of the day it an, an entertainment style job yeah you do have to be you know engaging if not entertaining and that's uh, true. what i was trying to get at like i want people who are working at normie jobs take uh, streaming or content creation more seriously rather than, you know, uh, being weirded out as when they say, oh, I'm a streamer or I uh, am an entertainer on the internet. When, mm-hmm. as you guys have said, movie stars are literally the exact same thing. It's just once on a movie see, and once I, on I, I, a computer. Careful. I was very sorry, specific, sorry, not, not to the, say exactly. Not the same thing, but the the roots of the idea of the job is the same, which is entertaining yes. people. I yes, will, I will I will say true. there is another thing to take into note in, in the difference between somebody who says I want to be a movie star and somebody who says I want to be a YouTuber or streamer or whatever. Right. For people that want to be a movie star. Usually the entry level there is they do some kind of theater or acting thing in middle school, high school. Yes, you're about to say what I was about to complain about. Go ahead. And there are plenty of small time, like, jobs you can do, you know, in that field. There are a lot of towns and a lot of cities that have theaters and you can, you can, you know audition and get a job acting in shows that those theaters put on and do mm-hmm. the small time stuff while you're working towards the big time stuff. Uh, right. Take so, it one step further. If you do wash out of being an actor, you're part of an industry. There are other jobs there for you. Yeah. Yeah. You can then go on to be a, an agent. You can go on to work at a theater in a non acting position. Mm hmm. There's a lot of transferable skills you will have learned from having to talk to people in this industry and just learn by being in it, like through osmosis. Yeah. It and then you also learn in, a lot in of ways. school, if you if you pursue that degree, that university degree, you also learn a lot. Right. Of so. uh, and odds are you'll probably double major for safety's sake and in, into business or something. Right. Uh, one of my friends, uh, longtime friends, doubled in communication and stuff when he did it. There you go. It, it's one of those things, like, partially because it is a very long-standing, you know, field of work, it has all of that as well, like, the schooling and whatnot as well, YouTubing, streaming doesn't have that, so it is, there's less of a safety net, so it, it is another yeah, reason exactly. I, I stress the, you know, have a backup plan, study yeah. something, uh, heck, the best thing you can study if you just don't know what to study and it will help you in streaming in content creation and it's a backup plan is find some kind of multimedia work, whether it be video editing, uh, hundred yeah. percent sound engineering, yeah. uh, you know, things like that, things that will be used in your attempt to want to be a streamer or content creator, or whatever, but is a backup job as well. 
Yeah, uh, absolutely have a way to fall back into AV. Yeah. It's not the most glamorous job in the world, but literally everyone needs it. I I, I can tell you, I've said this many times in the last few days, because I've had, I've had a big video project I've been working on for the last couple months, and it's finally over and done with. And so I've been stressing, like, I had a lot of compliments on that project, which I was very thankful for. I have no formal education in multimedia stuff. I've self-taught everything that I know when it comes to pretty much everything there is about computers that I know. Uh, the off the option was there for me in school to take those multimedia classes and stuff, but I went a different route with computers because I thought that's what what I wanted. Boy, was I wrong, and boy, did that turn out terribly. Uh, I should have taken multimedia. I really should have. So. It would have been yeah. very useful information to have. Um, so there are, so it's it's weird. Like there are a bunch of kids ma- like saying that now, um, and it's not as a defined field and path as say being a movie star is. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But there are ways to do it. It's you just need to have that information out there, which is why it's really good. I guess that we're giving this information. Uh, it's it's still one of those things. I guess I feel the same way I felt as a kid when I would see somebody in my class say, "I want to be a movie star or whatever." Uh, because as a kid, that my response to if somebody in my class said that or somebody I knew said that was always like, "I give you my full support. I a hundred percent uh believe in you. You got this." Um go for your dreams but it was just like man i i hope they'll be okay if they don't make it damn you all are really nice i'm a hater i saw it have you i i i see people for i mean i see people for how they present themselves and a lot of people want to be things that they are not oh they're not built to be talks that shit call off it's it's just it's just what it is, and I'm not saying you need to then be mean and say anything about it, but I do see a lot of people try for something that is out of their range, whether it be because of a lack of discipline, they just don't have what it takes to be consistent, uh, a lack of purpose, they they're just kind of lost and they're choosing this as their fad for the time, or and this isn't this really is more rare than I make it sound. A lack of skill. Some people just want to do things that they are not physically or mentally designed to do. Right. And but you know what? That's to fair. be fair, the appropriate thing to do for someone, if they if it isn't going to come back and blow up in their face, is to support them always. Right. Yeah. I'm just saying that what I say is filtered because my brain will oftentimes hear someone say a thing and go, "Hmm." I don't know about that. I don't know about that, Chief. <laughs> I'm just kind enough not to say it out loud. Yeah. I, yeah, it's, I I worry for people when they say it because, I guess because I am older now looking back. I mean, but th- I would have said this even in high school if, if somebody asked me this question. It's like, I, I realize they probably don't realize exactly what they're getting into. Because yeah. in a lot of ways, yeah, content absolutely. creation streaming is a very difficult job with a lot of work that goes into it. Yeah. Um, I mean, let's think about it. We, we're sitting here doing this podcast. This can be considered a form of content creation. Sure. In fact, it is content creation. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Think, think about the work, you know, that goes into just doing this. The, oh, like, I do. I know you do. All of the time. <laughs> like, it's it's... The recording the audio, uh, editing, putting the audio together, cleaning it up, all of these amazing audio you, things. That, you've, that, you've started too far ahead. I, I realize I have. Planning out the podcast, scheduling people, adjusting for schedule disappointments, then getting together, getting focused, recording, exporting, editing, and then getting it back to you and having an upload schedule. And then I'd take it and put it in video form for the YouTube and everything like that as well, which isn't as much work. It's nowhere near as much as to what Dalit does with, with all of our audio. Um, 
I would like to say I do pretty good on the scheduling thing. I think I'm pretty good at that. I'm just going to pat myself on the yeah, back 100%. for that. Thank you. 100%. I don't <laughs> think we've missed them. I don't think we've missed a week yet. Um, oh, nice. But there's, I mean, we, we, we put a lot into this and this is just a very casual podcast. I mean, you can go listen. Very, yeah, that's, that's the killer is this is as casual as I can imagine it. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you can go listen to tons of podcasts out there. Um, I'm sure our Spotify listeners, you know, have hundreds of podcasts they're subscribed to because there's so many on Spotify. Some some really good ones. Um, and the same for, I guess, same for YouTube side, really. But it's, this is content creation. And we put, you know, a considerable amount of work into this. And for somebody who wants to be a streamer or uh, if you want to be a YouTuber specifically, because I... I I think we've said it, and if not, I'll say it now. It's way more work on the YouTube side because video editing and putting all that together is a lot more work intensive and a lot more difficult than just, you know, the, and I'm going to make the sound a lot less work intensive than it actually is than just hitting the go live button on the stream. Yeah. No, I think it's right. I think maybe that does downplay it a little bit, but I mean, what else are you supposed to say? Yeah. YouTube videos are often highly edited. Uh, mostly thought out. I you can't just ramble anymore. So, well, I'm going to downplay it because not with I'm I'm not factoring quality when it comes to just simply just streaming. Doesn't even have to be a video game. You literally just need to download OBS and just have a microphone and then. You, mm -hmm. Well, you don't even need a microphone. You can literally just download OBS and press, hit the live button, and boom, you're technically streaming. Is it good streaming content? It's probably funny for like the first two minutes, but then it gets old quickly. Right. So, you are right. It is much more, uh, it takes much more effort to do video creating than streaming. But then once you factor in everything else when it comes to streaming, then that starts like piling on. And then I don't really think there needs to be a, oh, what's hard of video editing versus streaming? It's like, well, they're both hard. So who fucking cares, right? Like, And there's an aspect of this we haven't taken into account too. And I think what is that? It should be, it should be pointed out between the what's more difficult, the YouTube or the, I, or the I streaming side. I truly don't that, think that matters in the at all because it they both work regardless it's just they both work but it's like in matters of which is more difficult something we haven't pointed out does come back to the individual because mm. some people will find it more difficult and more tiring to be that entertaining personality consistently for a strong for yeah for strong periods yeah. of times yeah, yeah. and they'll have 100%. a much easier time in the pre-recorded state and then vice versa. Some people have a hard time, you know, I don't want to say faking it, but putting on the show on the YouTube side than they do just being their entertaining self in a natural environment. I mean, that's why that you have so many streamers that do long, that have their long streams and they'll say, you know, I'm tired after doing this stream, man. And it's yeah. like, yeah, you, you just had to basically put on an eight hour, I, for lack of a better example, you just had to do an eight hour like stand up routine. You just had to sit there and entertain for eight hours straight, like, or longer, depending on, you know, how the streamer does it. So, right, right. It I, is a job. Yeah, it is a job. And I think that's something a lot of, I, I think, I think a lot of, uh, a lot of people don't think about that, especially people that like aren't in that, in the communities, aren't like consumers to the content like i mean you have the generation before us or even plenty of people within our own generation and some even after that still to this day look at content creators and streamers and all of them and they consider them you know people that don't actually have a job and don't do stuff it's yeah like, right. like it, they, they don't realize to get out earlier. yeah they don't realize all the work and effort that goes into it and that can be said of people that write that as as or the kids that are writing that as that's what they want to do, they don't realize all of the work they're 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 metaphorically signing up for. So <laughs> right. they don't see all that that goes in, into it. But yeah, that, that's one see, of those. 
entertaining person on screen, I want to do that. They don't see all the background stuff. Yeah, and I, and, th- and that's the part that kills me because I think I've been in a crotchety old man since I was fourteen. <laughs> I was unironically going to say fourteen as a joke. Holy shit! Yeah, like, since I was in high school, I've always, been, I've always been a crotchety old man. I've always understood the shortcomings of an ill-conceived plan. Right. Not that I haven't had plenty of those, <laughs> but again, like this, this is why this is why I I make such a big fuss about the corporate side of things. Mm-hmm. Um, and to get uh, uber specific, it's why things like the failure of Niji Sanji on the EN side is so worrisome for me in that industry. I'm not as big into VTubers as you are, so I look at it. I assume I look at it in a very different way, right? Um, because my interest, like if I ever had to do it, I would want to be a company person and I see things like that. It's like, well, this is why that industry isn't long for this world because for every cover core, which as far, as far as we understand is a joy to work at for every V shoujo, which is apparently a joy to work at, you have a Niji Sanji, which is openly abusing their talents and not supplying them with any kinds of benefits, help, or honestly, at this point, as we found out, financials. Oh, yeah. So it is just a, it, it's a black spot in the industry that is very clearly being used to abuse people for the betterment of the C-suite. I, I would say that the corporate VTuber thing makes an interesting uh, point in that it, there are corporate streamers and content creators now, far fewer yes. than they are on the corporate VTuber scene, of course, uh, because of kind of how that whole situation works. But it it's an interesting thing that that is that is the thing that there is a corporate content creation thing out there now. There are people that do content creations for um, for like from for like a business and whatnot. So that's interesting. But in some ways, it, it's uh, it's a good thing because you'll see video games, which is, you know, one of the core ways of doing content creation. You'll see the game companies now have, like, small parts of their, like, community teams and, like, PR teams or whatever that their job is doing public streams for the company, yes. for, for the game. And that's that's really cool. Like, I think that's super and cool. And, yeah, I think, this I think, is why I have hope. I think having corporations take a more direct interest in this isn't a bad thing. And I understand why a lot of people think it is. A lot of people want to live this, I'm a freelancer forever, it goes through me, I'm not subservient to anyone else. But this is how you legitimize? Legitimize. Legitimize. Yeah. This is how you legitimize an industry. This is how you go from boomers and people like me seeing content creators and going, "Mm, I don't know, to, yeah, that seems viable. That seems, I mean, it's a bit niche, it's a bit risky, but it's, it's a job. Yeah. Yeah. And, and at the end of the day, it's, it's a, at the end of the day, I think none of us would deny, it's a fun job. Like, oh, for sure. For sure. You get to, depending on the form of content creation you take, you get to play video games for a living, you get to talk about anime for a living, you get to yeah. talk yeah, about yeah. movies for a living, whichever form of content creation you do, you get to do essentially one of the things you enjoy most for a living. And that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's really cool that that is, that, that is an opportunity for people now, because I mean, think about it. If if you rewind time, what, 30, 40 years, there were a lot of things people enjoyed doing that just was not an option to do in any form as, as Mm -hmm. careers. So it's, it's a really cool thing. Um, we, like I said, we we can consider ourselves content creators to some small degree because we do this podcast. Me and Nat yeah. stream. Um, so I I have a question about content creation for you guys. Oh, God. And I'll answer the question, too, after you guys. What is, for you, the, what is the one thing that most appeals to you about being a content creator that makes you want to do it? Chat. Chat interactions. What? What was that? 
not? Chat. Chat, chat interaction. Oh, chat. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Why? What did you, why I was what? terrified. I thought I heard cash. Oh, well, no, well, I mean, that's uh, the <laughs> second, very close second, but no, it is uh, chat interactions because that is legitimately the funnest portion of live streaming. And even with video making, like looking at the comment section, now you could argue comment section is can be worse than chat streams but you know that, that, that's a different argument right but interacting with to other people online is great i yeah it's an amazing thing um i, I as someone who is very very much a, re, a recluse now now I, mean, I was not always but i don't have many friends outside of my friend group so having that opportunity to you know interact with people out there is is awesome yeah. um so i get that that's that's an amazing thing and and it's a really exciting thing because just like how playing video games in general can allow you this opportunity getting the chance to talk to people from different walks in life and different places in the world mm-hmm. is yep really really cool and yep. really interesting like I mean, think about our friend group and the diversity that, that we have in it, and that's just awesome to, to you know, say that we have that. So, yeah, yeah chat, chat is an amazing, amazing answer, honestly. Like, that's, yeah, that's a fair answer. I, 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 fully, I fully can say that's a great one. I agree. It's but, the sec- part of it. but my second answer is cash, okay? All right, let's, let's not, <laughs> let's not beat no, around. I, I, I just misheard you, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, it's it's harder for me to say because I'm not. You're not. I'm not as online. And I'm not creator. as. Yeah, I'm not as much of a creator as you two. Like I, I don't pursue this as heartily as you two do. Right. But thinking about it for any amount of time and really considering all the things I've already said, uh, the reality is probably the collaborative nature that can come from it. Mm. I'm a part of zero podcasts where it's just me. In both of my podcasts, I have two other amazing hosts to rely on. And if I had to stream, I know I would be relying on the strength of other streamers to come in and collaborate with. Because it, it, it would be where I would feel most comfortable. Right. So, it's an assumed answer, but that is what I what I feel I would most like to take away from that direction, should I ever take it. I, I, I think it's a very a really good answer. I think it's a very valid answer, yeah. Yeah, because I mean, I can I could probably list, you know, so many, you know, streamers that I would love to get the chance to interact with mm-hmm. and meet and, you know, Getting yeah. into streaming makes that more possible because they're interesting and just cool individuals, you know. So I, I, sure. yeah, like yeah, I, I fully get that. Um, yeah, I mean, and like like I said, it's it's what where my answer eh, it's what my answer had been up until now. I enjoyed Achievement Hunter and Machinima. Both could be considered like group based projects. Uh, the very few YouTuber highlights I watch are because they're highlights, usually of group play, whether it be Sayu. Uh, Monarch and Joel being absolute goobery siblings with one another. Yeah. The Hollow Girls, the Vishojo Girls. It's always collaborative in nature. And yeah, I think yeah. that's my my that's the big thing that really stands out to me about being on a stream. Because for every Markiplier, there is a Jacksepticeye. Yeah. Like yes, they both stream separately, but when they come together, hoo hoo, sparks fly. It it's and I mean even if you think about it from a smaller scale. Like, the three of us were mods for a, a big, a big, yeah, a big creator in the, uh, I don't know why I questioned that so heavily. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was a big creator in the Final Fantasy community, or Final Fantasy fourteen community for a while. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. you know, that allowed us a chance to some effect of collaboration with, uh, or at least meeting some of the content creators in that field. Um, sure. I sure. mean, like, I know on... On your other podcast that that uh, you're on, Dalit, y'all have had Sly on a couple times. Y'all got to chat with Sly about yep. about games. And We've stuff. had That's Sly. Right. We've had Haps. Yeah, y'all have had, We've had Frosty. 
Yeah, Frosty. Like, yeah, I've had a lot, a lot of doors to us. Yeah, y'all, you know, got to interact with a lot of these really cool content creators that I know I, for one, have watched a lot of. And then, you know, because of uh, FanFest and, and then being in that group, you know, I got to stand and chat with Haps. And that was, for me, that was a very humbling thing because he's kind of the door that got me into that game. Uh, sure. One of, like, like one of the two doors on a double doors that got me into that game and thus got me into all of you amazing friends that I have. Um, so that was a very humbling and thing for me, and I really enjoyed getting to talk with him. And I got to sit and talk with Sly a bit and treated him to a drink, and that was really cool. So it's, so yeah, the, the collaborative side of things is great, and it's, you know, it, it's it's always that kind of thing. I think for me, as, as a very small-time creator of any form, just the thought of being able to sit down and talk with big streamers or just these streamers that I watch and I really enjoy listening to um like like let's you know big streamers out there and that's just like stories that are out there even though she's told it you know a hundred thousand times i would love you know for mouse to come onto this and just tell her story again because her story is encouraging in so many ways and she's just an encouraging individual like and that's man i love mousy yeah she's she's fantastic all right um let me speak to Alpha. I'll set it up. Uh, <laughs> yeah, thanks, yeah, yeah, thanks for having yeah, me. If, you, if you can speed dial that, yeah, that'd be cool. Um, there, there was there was a second part there that I just I want to I want to make the comment that you know bouncing off of people that's something in uh, I'll say definitely when I started streaming and I still do it's something I rely on. It's why oh, I yeah, so many of my streams I do sit in an open voice call. Uh, because I, I I do have that fear about that by myself I am not super entertaining so having oh, people to yeah. bounce off of and talk with mm -hmm. is always a really really helpful thing. Uh, I don't I don't find myself a particularly entertaining person uh, by myself so that is that yeah, that one I, I do get get as well. <laughs> yeah, um, that's that's kind of the uh, especially if you're going into streaming all by yourself um like there there is that fear and that time where you will be talking to yourself but if you but it, like it's kind of like a semi-rare case but if you do come into streaming right but like no one else to streams but like you bring a friend or two over just so they can like co-host your streams as well like it's a lot more better than just sitting in silence for like five to ten minutes and then something interesting happens and then you can finally make a comment on it because personally i cannot talk for i, I cannot talk on forever because i i just don't have anything interesting to talk about but um but that's mostly like in the middle parts of the stream at the start of the stream it's it's actually kind of easy because you're already like setting up everything you have like somewhat of talking points and then and then you know once 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 later on in the stream once you finish your talking points and that's when you tip away and all that it's like and then everything becomes silent yeah yeah i'll say it's it's i think i can talk a lot better now um don't think i'm entertained any more entertaining but i think i can talk a lot better now but I still really like having those extra voices there or people in chat to talk with because oh, yeah. especially when I'm playing like a single player game or a story heavy game, just because this is, this is a habit I've had my entire life and that's no surprise is sometimes I just get enraptured with what's unfolding in the yep. story of the game I'm playing. A thousand percent. And I'm just sitting yeah. there like reading the lines or whatever and I'm just like, and then, and then I'm just completely forgetting to talk because I'm trying to try to process. And let me say, yeah. let me let me tell you what I don't I don't think I'm kind of thankful I was having, I had tech issues and I was not able to stream Final Fantasy 16 because I think I would have been like so enraptured with everything going on I would have I would have like never talked I would have just been sitting there trying to piece everything together the entire time I've been like Whoa. Man. yeah yeah yeah. If I streamed, I would have to play. I'd have to play like Monster Hunter fighting games and Relink at all times because it's <laughs> everything happens so quickly and is so short yep. that it wouldn't give me time to get enraptured. Because I absolutely agree, I would forget myself if yeah. I got too into what I was doing. 
Yeah, like uh, that, you know. and uh, it's got to be games like that. The, the games that don't require that intense focus for a story thing. So you know, grind games. Or playing Final Fantasy fourteen, I don't have to do it when I'm not doing story related stuff on Genshin. I'm usually pretty good about it. Yeah. Talking fine. Uh, it's always easy to find something to complain about with Genshin, though, and that makes conversation in and of itself. So surprisingly good for content. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess I have to answer now, huh? Yes. Yeah, you are the last man standing. So, my answer is... I don't know, I feel like in some ways it's kind of kind of a, a cheesy one. Um, the thing that... The love it, of the game. No. The thing that appeals to me the most about content creation isn't even something specific to content creation. It is... It's like a few things in one. It's it's okay. working from home primarily. It's making your own schedule and just that freedom that those two things encapsulate. Independence. Um, yeah. And yes, a part of it is, you know, getting to do what you love, getting to play video games. Because I love video games. I have loved video games my entire life. They're the closest thing I will say I ever have to a passion, I guess. I right. just love video games um but it, it's that freedom from working from home that making your own schedule and mm-hmm. it, it's it's this thing it's this thing that i you know i consider the possibility of if say one day i am lucky enough to ever be married and have a family of my own i want to be able to do the a job that i enjoy and that i love but still have that ability and freedom to at a moment's notice be there for my wife or my kids if they need me because mm. that's my personality. I'm I'm someone who always puts the people that matter to me first and foremost above everything else and they will always be above work, whatever that is. Mm. And content creation is one of the best ways to do something I love and be able to uh, have a work that lets me put the things I love above it to no detriment so if wife or kids needed me i could you know be like hey stream's gonna be late i gotta go you know handle some stuff and just come back and do it when i get back when things are sorted i could be there for my family and my loved ones um i mean and it applies to my friends too if one of my friends has like a terrible day or really needs me uh to just go sit with them have a drink or whatever be like okay i'll i'll meet you there i'll be there in a few minutes and then it's just when I get back, like, hey guys, let's stream, let's play some games. It's, I, I like that being able to be at home and being able to be just central to where the people that need you are able, to, you're able to be there for them. Like mm-hmm. I said, that's not something unique to content creation, but it's it's the it's one of the only jobs out there that has that freedom and uh, lets me do something I love and yeah. be there for the people I love. Uh, even the ones that don't exist, like my non-existent family. <laughs> yeah, but because the last thing you want to hear, right, is that you know your your wife is or your child is like you know sick or something happened, and the last thing you want to hear is your boss saying if you leave, you're fired. It's like yeah, <laughs> all right, fine. And then and then you're in a tough situation having to figure that out, and then yeah. so, it's yeah, uh, it's understandable. And then, I mean, even if, even if, you know, you have a good boss and a good job that says, no, we get it, go, you Mm. still have however long of a transit from where you work. Uh, And then if it's something urgent, you're going to panic and that just makes things more complicated and it's going to make things more difficult for you in the long run and potentially whoever else needs you. And the risk of having an accident yourself. Yeah. Um, and I'm a fairly unlucky person. I don't want to give myself more, more risks than I need to in that regard. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, you know, I just, I don't know. That's kind of something I realized. I don't want to say early on in my life, but it, it really early on in my 20s, I think, I realized I'm like, I, I want to, I want to do something I love and I want to be able to be there for the people that need me and above all if i ever have a family i want to be there for my family like first and foremost because they will always be first and foremost to me 
So mm-hmm. yeah. like I said it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a cheesy answer, but that is kind of dull. That's just cheese. Me. That's that, that's how I am. I, I I I think with my heart more than I do anything else. I think. Yeah, no that that's a that's a very fair answer. I would say. That's good. I'll be callous enough for us both. <laughs> that's what I got dollar for. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so it's just content creation in general is an interesting thing. And I'm like, we could, we could talk more in depth about it, but I think, I think just kind of reflecting on the fact that it's a thing and just putting some of these sound pieces of advice into the either from more voices on the internet, Mm -hmm. probably a good thing for those younger viewers and stuff as well. Um, just this is just a fun topic to talk about, and maybe we'll come back to it again sometime. Oh, we definitely. Uh, especially, especially if you listeners are interested, we can always come back around to it. Always happy to. For sure, for sure. You mm-hmm. can let us know in the uh, comment section down below on YouTube. Next time, I will be less negative. <laughs> Don't that for a second. Um, Why you can also let us know over on Twitter uh, with the hashtag AskCRP or any other things you want us to talk about. And if there's anything you uh, take away from this episode, just take it away as a very long shill for twitch.tv slash archangelgn2 or twitch.tv slash nathari's and uh, go check us mm-hmm. out. Yeah. I oh, had to include uh, that. <laughs> had to include no, that. Definitely Why not? Those, uh, just those two out. If you liked what you heard here, there will be more of that there. It's true. And you can, yeah. and I can almost guarantee Dalit's voice will be present at some point on one or both of them. So yeah. he's, he's not, he's not escaping us. We don't, we won't let him. Oh no. He's, he's literally <laughs> shackled. Um, but thank you all so much as always for listening we do always appreciate each and every one of you uh, as I said uh, leave your thoughts in the comments below on YouTube tweet them at us over on Twitter follow us on Twitter at Celestia Radio PD and uh, as always be sure to share it around and let your friends know uh, you know that's just like with content creation in general on the streaming side you share it tell your friends about it you see somebody you like small tell your friends say hey I found this small streamer I like why don't you go check them out you never know the amount of good it will do. But as always, each and every one of you are appreciated. We thank you so much for being with us through all of these episodes so far. And uh, hope to see you back for the next one, which there most definitely will be. Appreciate each and every one of you guys. And until next time. Take care, everyone. Be good now. <laughs> <laughs>